Hi folks, welcome to this video on body composition and obesity. So we're going to look at um, all aspects, well not all aspects, but the key aspects of, of how our bodies are made up. Let's start with the term that we've highlighted there in terms of body composition, sorry. What that means is, is what is your body composed of? What is it made of? Now your body is made of muscle tissue, bone tissue, skin tissue, fat mass. It's made of organs, it's made of fluids such as water and blood and all these different substances. But essentially, what we're talking about when we're dealing with athletes in terms of body composition is how much of them is fat and how much of them is fat-free mass. So we've just quickly added that there. Now, what that means is you could have people of the same weight, but they will have very different body compositions. So this person here might actually weigh the same as this person here in terms of how many stones and pounds they weigh. But in terms of what their body is composed of, this person's body obviously has a lot more fat-free mass, whereas this person obviously has a lot more fat mass. So body composition is what are you made of? And equally, you know, be, there is no right or wrong answer here yeah, because this lady has a body fat percentage that is ideal for her activity, which is obviously aerobic long-distance running, whereas Valerie Adams, who's a shot putter, she will have a slightly higher body fat percentage yet still be very muscular in order to, for her to have mass to put into the shot to throw it the furthest distance, okay? So the point we're trying to make is body composition isn't just about weight. It's about how much of you is fat mass and how much of you is fat-free mass. But depending on certain sports, you want your body fat percentages to be, you know, appropriate for your activity. A sumo wrestler is going to have a lot more body fat than a long-distance runner, Okay. But what are the general guidelines? What are the general principles surrounding body composition? Well, they're as follows. Those are the general guidelines, okay? The ladies amongst you, you should be 25% body fat. So 25% of your weight should be body fat, okay? Whereas the males, 15% should be body fat. You ladies have slightly more... Uh, 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 slightly more body fat due to things like childbirth and things like that. You're going to need that throughout your life, okay? Whereas males... Obviously, because we are blessed not to have to cope with childbirth. You women are amazing people. We have to have less body fat to be categorised in the normal range. So that is the body composition, what body fat values should be for a male and a female. The problems are, if you go above these values, it's going to lead to a lot of health-related problems. Okay? Things like diabetes things like heart disease, even things like arthritis, all that excess weight. You know, if we look at this person here, those knees and those ankles are supporting all of that body weight all day. It's going to damage the cartilage. So things like that, you know, the things that you wouldn't normally think of, but, you know, the, the common things are the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the heart disease. We're going to look a little bit at that when we look at obesity in a couple of minutes. Okay, so a common way to look at whether we are the right, or whether we have the right body composition, I should say, and I'm going to actually go back on that in a minute for a very good reason. But a common way to look at body composition is to use or to calculate your BMI, your body mass index. And in order to do that, you need to use this equation. Okay, so it's weight in kilos divided by height in meters squared. Now, you are not asked to take a calculator into the exam. And we've never had a question where you've had to calculate someone's BMI. But there has been a question saying, how do you calculate BMI? In other words, you need to know this equation. And there's a couple of key things you need to remember. You need to remember the units. If you don't put the units in, you don't get the marks. It's not centimetres, it's metres, it's not grams, it's kilograms. And the key thing here is you only square the height. You don't square... The weight is only the height that gets squared. So think of it another way. It's weight divided by height times height. That's what basically squared is. You know, you times something by itself. But that is the equation that you need to do to in order to calculate your BMI. You could do it yourselves. You need your weight in kilos, your height in meters squared. And you will come up with a value. It should be a two-digit value. You, there might be a decimal point. You know, round it up or down. But you should come up with a value that looks a little bit, or, you know, it looks something like this. Okay, so as you can see, what we've got here, a body mass index value. Now, this diagram has been produced not by me, and I see what they're trying to do, but have a look at the bottom. 
it doesn't matter for males or females uh, what your body mass index is. If you are, if your body mass index workout has been less than 18.5 for males or females, you are categorized as underweight. You do not have enough body weight, okay? 18.5 to 24.9, you are in the healthy weight category, okay? If you are 25 to 29.9, you are in the overweight category, and if you are greater than 30, you are categorized as being obese, okay? Now, it's well worth remembering those. So, you know, anything less than 18.5 is underweight. 18.5 to just under 25 is healthy weight. 25 to just under 30 is overweight. And anything over 30 is obese, okay? Now, I said a minute ago, a couple of minutes ago, that about take, going back a bit on body composition. There is a problem with this method, with these values, okay? And it's that thing there, weight. That is a very, very vague term. Weight can be muscle tissue, fat tissue, your skeleton, the amount of fluid you've got in your system right now. Weight is a very, very vague term. And I don't agree with it being, body mass index being a measure of body composition. However, in the exam, they could say, what is a limitation of using BMI to measure body composition? And it's that there. It only looks at weight. It doesn't look at what of you, or how much of you is fat and how much of you is fat-free mass. For example, every player who plays in Super League, pretty much every player, is overweight or obese, according to BMI. Now, they're not carrying excess amounts of body fat. It's because they've got very high levels of muscle mass, but that counts as weight. So there is a problem with using this method. The general rule is you don't really want to use it with high-level performers, okay? Because you'll equally find someone like Mo Farah probably has a BMI of less than 18.5. But we're not going to go around saying he's unfit and unhealthy. He's, you know, he's won how many gold medals at World Championships and Olympics. So... Yes, there are going to be extremes, and yes, you've got to be careful when using it. What I would say is, it's great to use on the general population, us normal people. Yes, we play sports, but we're not elite level athletes or anything like that. So, there is a problem with using it, and it's the fact that it only looks at weight, and it doesn't look at how much of you is fat, and how much of you is fat-free mass. Finally then, what else could they ask you? Well, they could ask you about the problems of obesity, and how do you define it? Okay, well, let's go with the problems first because, you know, I'm sure we're all aware of them. There are multiple problems to carrying excess amounts of body fat. Not in any particular order, but, you know, the general answers are there's a massive increased risk of heart disease. Look at all of that weight there and there. Every time this person lays down on their back on a night time, that weight is pushing down on their chest, pushing down on their heart. Okay, if there's that much fat stored under their skin, think about how much fat is inside their blood vessel walls as well. Okay, so that's going to lead to high blood pressure and high levels of cholesterol. Okay, so the, you know, this is a serious, serious problem. As a result of this high cholesterol, you're also going to have an increased risk of strokes. You know, a, a, a blockage in blood flow to the brain, which has devastating consequences. You know, and diabetes, I was going to say, and finally, there are many problems that obesity causes, but diabetes is another one. You know, diabetes or it's your inability to control blood sugar, you know, you need to inject insulin and things like that. It's a lot more serious than that. With diabetes, it can, list, it can lead to limbs having to be amputated. If you get an infection due to diabetes, it can go gangrene. Now, if that limb isn't amputated in time, it will kill you. So, you know, these are these are huge complications in life. The overall thing is, what is obesity doing to you? It is This here is dramatically reducing your life expectancy due to all of these problems, okay? Now, I've just quickly added three in blue writing because these aren't as, you know, these are extreme. But the factors that can affect this, come away from obesity, let's say we're just looking at being overweight, carrying a bit too much weight. Here's the issue there. In terms of performance, we're going to have decreased flexibility. This person is not going to be able to have good range of movement around the joints due to the fat mass. The speed is going to be dramatically reduced. They're not going to be able to move very quickly. 
They're also going to have much less stamina. Carrying all that weight every day, you are not going to be able to move as far or, you know, as long as if you if, as if you lost a lot of weight. So there are, you know, there are less extreme problems, but these are still problems nonetheless in terms of exercise and performance. Now, if I just move all this up ever so slightly, okay, slightly out of the way, that'll do. That's a bit better. Let's get rid of all that writing for a brief second. The last thing that they could ask you about obesity and being overweight are the, are the definitions of it, okay? Now, as we've seen on the previous slide, there's a dead easy way to define obesity. That is someone who has a BMI that is greater than 30. So that is a definition of obesity. Someone whose BMI is greater than 30. If you also remember on the first slide, we said that males should have a body fat percentage of 15% and females 25%. So definition of obesity is males having a body fat percentage of 25% and females having a body fat percentage of 35%, i.e. if you have 10% more body fat than is normal, that is a definition of obesity as well. Okay, so obesity is not simply just carrying too much weight because we could also say, well, that's a definition of overweight and obesity and overweight are not the same thing. Obesity is being extremely overweight, but we need to define it better than that. And the two key ways are having a BMI of greater than 30 or having a body fat percentage 10% above normal. So that would be 25% body fat for a male and 35% body fat for a female. Hope you found this video useful, folks. The key things are, Difference between body, what is body composition, you know, what is what we talk about, the fat mass and fat free mass, okay, that's one key thing you need to know. How to calculate BMI as an equation, okay, we need to know that, and the problems with using BMI, i.e. it only looks at weight, it doesn't look at exactly what you are made of, okay, and then this, how to define obesity accurately.